as a senior in high school, I, I, I wasn't sure what I really wanted to do. I was kind of divided between basketball and football. And my, I think my father at the time really thought I was going. I remember a conversation we had in the car one day, and I can't remember where we were coming from, but it kind of sticks in my mind that he just knew, I said, that I had made up my mind I, that I knew where I was going to go. And he goes, I already know, too. And he thought I was taking the easy road out and going to go play basketball. And uh, I had already made up my mind to go to Notre Dame at that point. From where we come in Pennsylvania, I mean, everybody wanted to go to Notre Dame. I mean, it's, it was that tradition, that, that part of the country. And uh, any time we went out on Saturdays, we always turned on the Notre Dame game. Then we, on Sunday morning, we get up early in the morning so we could watch the replays on television. So it was probably brainwashed in early age. I don't even remember how I even got started on Notre Dame. I really liked the team. It was almost like a religion. I, I couldn't do anything until I. I watched the game Saturday or Sunday if they were on. Later on in the action, Notre Dame has to punt. Joe knew that Notre Dame tradition went beyond Lindsey Nelson's tape-delayed television broadcasts. Any freshman football player new to South Bend couldn't help getting caught up in the lore and legend of Rockney and Hornung, and in recent years, of Joe Theismann and Pennsylvania product Terry Hanratty, one of Joe's idols. But when Joe Montana began at Notre Dame, he quickly learned that he was just one of many with the same goal. When I got to Notre Dame, you know, as a freshman, you always have these illusions of grandeur in your mind that things are going to be a lot better than they really are. And when I got there, I, I was in shock that there were seven other freshman quarterback <laughs> on the team. At first, as a freshman, he didn't stand out much more than anybody else. And uh, there were actually two other freshman quarterbacks that were higher rated than he was as freshmen. After a disappointing freshman campaign, Joe began his sophomore season as a backup quarterback. But thanks to seven comeback victories in three years, Montana left a legacy of his own for the record books at Notre Dame. It was early in the season and hotter than the sun of a gun. Uh, we were in no position to make a rally. With just over six minutes left in the game, Montana completed three of four passes for 129 yards and a touchdown. Well, certainly that was Joe's big entrance into college football and uh, what really got him uh, a lot of notoriety as far as his ability to come in and, and make a big comeback game for the University of Notre Dame. Uh, that was the first uh, indication that he had the ability to be a great quarterback. Uh, everyone knew that he had some inner confidence, but that was the first time he was able to actually demonstrate it on the field. I recall how impressed the North Carolina people were with Joe's performance. Uh, I was too. Notre Dame Athletic Director Moose Krause called the game the greatest comeback in Notre Dame history. But a week later, Joe found himself coming off the bench again. Usually in my position, you got to play in one or two ways. Either you were way ahead, or you were way behind. And this happened to be the case, we were way behind. The Air Force game was the turning point, I think, as far as the uh, indication as to who should be quarterback. With a season high 134 yards passing, Joe engineered three scoring drives and established himself as a relief quarterback. If you're 
wanting to be in the position, oh yeah, I can't wait to have the ball, but then when you get in the position, you don't do anything with it. It's, it's probably worse. In his junior year, Joe again started the season on the bench, but was called upon against Purdue. The comeback kid responded with two fourth quarter touchdowns and seemed to win more allies in his battle to secure the starting job. You know, I'm not afraid to be in the position. I don't want to be here, but I'm not afraid of it. I don't jump up and down, yeah, I can't wait, now look what I can do because I'm in this position. And um, I think that's what guys like to, to see. That was ultimately the turning point of, of our whole season that year, and that allowed us to win the national championship. As you know, Joe came in that year, and we never, we never lost another game during that season and went on to win the national championship. Joe's junior year turned out to be a banner season for the Fighting Irish. Not only did Montana start the remaining nine games for Notre Dame, but it was also a season that saw coach Dan Devine bring out the green uniforms for the rivalry against USC. Under Montana, Notre Dame continued to move up in the national rankings. But it took more heroics against Clemson to keep the Irish bid for a national title alive. Undefeated in five previous starts, Joe led the Irish into Death Valley for their game against 15th-ranked Clemson. He was just an individual that came on the field. You knew what his uh, physical abilities were and everyone played uh, up and beyond, I think, their physical abilities uh, due to his leadership. Although he hit on only nine of 21 passes, Montana rushed for two fourth quarter touchdowns to lead the Irish past the Tigers. There's no doubt in, in my mind about the, the ability of the other guys. And I think in return, you get the same from them.